Kuchok. President, please be seated. The court is now back in session. And the floor is given to Judge Lavenge to resume his questioning. You may proceed. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, witness, uh, you were telling us before the break uh, about uh, the execution of Lunnell soldiers. And in particular, you spoke about the execu execution of a colonel. And you said that he was married, that his wife was French. So was this a military officer executed along with his family, with his wife? The wife and children were also executed. Did you hear any specific instructions regarding the execution of London soldiers back then? But people over kill people kill one another at the battlefields. That is that was uh, what uh, happening during the war time. It is usual that uh, people kill one another at war time. Me. Yes, but what you're describing now. Did this happen before or after the 17th of April? Before or after the end of the war? After the war of, nine, of 17 April 1975, uh, a few days after the liberation of Phnom Penh, uh, Fighting still happened in Phnom Penh even one month later. And uh, some uh, former soldiers uh, remaining uh, inside buildings at the time in Phnom Penh uh, were taken away and killed. If we had not uh, killed those people, they would have uh, killed us back. When you heard or when you saw the body of this executed colonel, where were you posted? Were you in Takmao? Were you at uh, the PJ prison? Where were you when this happened? I was not at uh, PJ or PZ uh, prison. I was uh, working at Takmao. Did you hear about executions of uh, Lunol soldiers when you were in Takmao? But <coughs> answer, not hearing. I witnessed the actual. <coughs> Killings. Since I was asked to uh, bring all those uh, people onto the vehicles, and I was also asked to stand guard. Je vais répéter. Let me repeat a question I already put to you. So, can you tell us if there were many executions? Were there 10, 20? How many people? Globally speaking, were executed. You know. uh, not more than people. 
not, not more than 50 people. Now I'm going to move on to a last series of questions, which will be very short. When you were working as an interrogator at uh, S21, um, did you hear the names of certain senior leaders uh, in uh, the confessions of some of the prisoners? In prisoners? Confessions, they, I mean, the prisoners implicated Hu Nam and Hu Yun, Hu Yun, and those uh, below the two individuals, and uh, no other names uh, were implicated in the confessions. Bien, je vous remercie. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Witness. I have no further questions to put to you. President, thank you. The floor is now given to the defense teams for the accused. Starting first from Nunjie defense team, you may proceed. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. President. Um, before I begin, two um, preliminary remarks, uh, Mr. President, if you allow me. Um, first of all, I uh, presume that um, we have uh, at least until um, Monday morning 10, uh, 10.40, so that we have the uh, equivalent in time uh, at the prosecution. That, that, is, that is one preliminary remark I would like to remake, make. Um, the second one, um, uh, that is basically a um, a heads up to, to the chamber and to the parties. Um, as you know, we filed um, uh, a motion, uh, Rule 92 motion. Uh, it's, uh, it has its number E399. Uh, and uh, it is a motion called uh, Nguyen Chia's Rule 92 motion to use certain S21 statements. Um, in it, we uh, argue um, that um, from the testimony of Duik on multiple occasions, um, uh, we conclude that uh, Koi Tun, when he was uh, interrogated by Duik personally, uh, was not subject um, to any uh, maltreatment or torture. Um, and that because of this, uh, there is enough reason to believe that, that, uh, that those statements are not um, the product of torture. I believe um, the prosecution has until Monday to react uh, on this, but um, nevertheless it might already be, um, it might already be um, a document that we will be confronting the witness with already today. So I'm just um, telling you this in advance. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, if I am on my feet, it is because I don't believe that a discussion on the content of confessions should take place before a witness, before a witness is questioned or examined. We will answer the different requests at the beginning of the afternoon, not right now. Now, regarding time, I believe the defense uh, is uh, in error. It should not be given time until 10.40 on Monday for two reasons. First of all, because we started around 9.30 yesterday morning. And the exact, so 30 minutes uh, after the beginning of the hearing because of other discussions. And second, because Judge Laverne started putting questions to the witness as of 10 o'clock this morning. And since Judge Lavergne is not part of the prosecution, it would not be fair to say 
that uh, we used up our time until 10.40 today. So I think that we should uh, retract the time taken by Judge Lavergne, as well as the time lost yesterday morning, which means that the defense should have until 9.30 Monday morning, possibly. I think this should be um, fairer uh, than trying to finish today. Thank you. If I may respond, Mr. Oh, I Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, a short observation to let you know that the civil parties intend to respond uh, to the Nunchia defense uh, request on the foundation of Rule 92. We object to the use of the three confessions mentioned in uh, the request. Our answer is ready. It's being translated. So this answer will be submitted to the chambers within the delay, that is to say before Monday. So please do not allow the Nguyen Chia team to use these confessions as long as the parties haven't filed in an official way their response. And I can already announce to the chamber that we, as the civil parties, object to the use of these three confessions. And uh, we believe that uh, the Nguyen Chia team has not provided us with the evidence that these confessions do not contain the risk that they were obtained under torture at S-21. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I simply like to respond regarding the issue of time. It appears to me that up until now, we always operated on the basis of uh, equal time between the prosecution and the civil parties and the defense. But I'd like to add that uh, we in the Kusompan defense team, as we act last, we do not have any questions. But today, I can tell you that there will be questions for this witness. And under these conditions, the approximate calculation of the prosecution does not uh, suit us at all. And we believe that we should have the time that was normally afforded to the, to the defense teams, let us say one full day, four sessions. Since, um, and we can see this in yesterday's transcripts, there was a request for extra time outside of the fact of uh, the time that was retrieved yesterday by the, by the prosecution. So the time that was initially scheduled for the defense should be fully used by the defense. So 9.30 really doesn't uh, uh, tally with that. My apologies, Mr. President, indeed. Enough. The chamber decides on what has been made. As long as the chamber has not uh, issued orally on the requests submitted by party, and the chamber allows uh, parties to submit an oral submission, then at the time, other parties uh, may have the rights to respond. And after hearing submission and responses, the chamber will issue a decision or ruling on the request uh, submitted by any parties. And number two, in relation to documents, and if parties uh, does not address the chamber in accordance uh, with the procedures and proceeding, uh, the chamber will not decide on and consider on those uh, submissions. The chamber is concerned on the documents to be used by the parties, especially uh, the torture-tainted documents or evidence. The chamber is cautious 
and is mindful of uh, those documents, although those documents are newly uh, shown to the chamber. And parties are reminded to be mindful as well. And uh, so far, there are objections uh, by parties about uh, the torture tainted evidence. But please make sure that uh, what that the time that you are using uh, is uh, mindful and is appropriate. And uh, let me clarify that the chamber usually uh, balance the time that allotted to parties. And uh, for parties who put questions which are irrelevant and which are not to ascertain the truth, then the chamber can cut off the floor. And uh, I have uh, informed, I, I told the lead call lawyers for civil party already that uh, you had 30 minutes to put uh, the question in the first session. And I adhered uh, to uh, the time allotted to you. And I am strict on the time and even to and the second session, we started late, and I had that in mind already. And you have the floor now, Council Copper. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Sorry, um, Council, just to be clear for the record, in case it wasn't as clear in English as probably in Khmer, don't use the document until you have a decision, and the decision will be made on Monday after parties have had an opportunity to be heard. Um, I will do so, um, Judge Fenz. Um, good morning, Mr. Witness. Um, let me um, start by following up some questions um, right after the break in relation to um, execution of former Lon Nol uh, officers. Um, I, I heard you mentioned a name of that particular colonel, um, something like in Khmer uh, Ketara. C can you say that name again for me? What? Answer. I heard the people call the name Ketara and. Uh, that name is correct. Um, do you know who the former uh, Lono um, commander was of Takmao um, district? I don't know. Ketara was arrested at Bajan, and then he was sent to the, munis the first instant court at Takmao, since I.O. was standing guard at that location. Um, Mr. President, because the subject uh, came up unexpectedly, um, the document that I would like to show uh, to the witness is not on the interface, uh, but I believe it's well known uh, to the parties. Um, it is document E3 slash um, 832, and um, it's a list with 17 names, um, 17 names of um, tra traitors in a special zone. Um, The document is um, signed or, or written by PIN, Division 703 Commander. And um, on that document, English ERN 00068921, Khmer 00068920, and I will provide the, the, the French um, a bit later, there is under number two, a, a mention of a commander of Takamao military district. But anyway, I would like um, uh, 
to show the witness this document and ask him whether he recognizes any names. President, please proceed. Um, Mr. Witness, particularly um, number two, as I said, um, Kampong, Kampuhong, Lieutenant Colonel, former commander of Takamao Military Subdistrict. Uh, every last member of his family is a traitor. And then this one's nature is extremely vicious. Um, have you ever heard of someone called Kampuhong? I have never heard all these names. Um. President intervenes. Kampuong. Uh, Kampuong. Have you ever heard of that name? Please answer, Mr. Winners. Winners. I have never heard of that name, Mr. President. Um, just to be sure as well, you didn't yourself take part in the execution? No. Do you know who did? But I know Un, the commander of a battalion, battalion 138, and uh, division of uh, 703 from the special zone that did the task. Who um, ordered Un to do this? It's beyond my knowledge. Uh, who else ordered Un? Un, rather. Um, do you know if Un? Um, did this out of reasons of revenge? But I do not know how it happened. There was an order from Un to execute uh, the, the prisoner of war. I might get back to that later. Um, Mr. Witness, let me now move on to my original questions. Uh, you yourself were uh, 
a member of Division 703 or Division 12 when it was still known, how it was still known in 1975. Uh, you, you were a, a, a member of the 143rd Battalion, is that correct? I was simply a youth. I was not a member of uh, the battalion. I was a combatant uh, in the Division 703, uh, Regiment 38 of the artillery unit. I uh, do not recall the number of battalion that I belong to. Um, in a, uh, a book written about uh, Division 703, um, document E3-2117, uh, English ERN 0008130. I don't have the Khmer um, ERN yet, Mr. President. I will provide it um, shortly. Um, on, on this page, um, Mr. Witness, it says that you were a veteran of the 143rd Battalion of the 12th Division. So that is incorrect? Division 703. That is correct. I cannot recall the number of battalion. But again, were you a, a veteran member of the 143rd Battalion of Division 12? Yes or no? The same answer from me. I cannot recall which uh, number of uh, battalion I belonged to, but I can say, I can recall that I was a part of Division 703. Were you ever engaged in a active combat? Uh, I believe yesterday you said you, did, you were. Um, were you engaged in active combat with Lonol soldiers in? Um, the liberation uh, during the liberation of Phnom Penh in April 75. I, in, I was in, engaged in the active combat uh, from 1973-74 up to the time when I entered uh, Phnom Penh. Uh, during this active combat, did you ever see? Uh, comrades of yours being uh, shot and wounded. But yes, they were wounded and they died uh, one after another. What about those who were wounded but didn't die? Do you know any of those? For the combatants who were wounded and survived, actually when they were wounded, uh, they uh, were sent to the hospital at the rear and then after, they, uh, after their recovery, they uh, were sent back to the battlefield. And do you know whether those wounded comrades um, received blood um, given by other comrades uh, in that hospital in the rear? I am not sure on this particular issue. 
I have never heard that I uh, heard of the blood infusion. And however, surgery uh, did happen on the wounded soldiers, but not a major or significant uh, operation uh, was conducted. Were you or your comrades in the 143rd Battalion ever asked to donate blood to the wounded comrades? No, such a thing did not happen. Have you ever heard of a um, 12th Division combatant called Meng Hak? I belonged to Division 12 uh, before I uh, was part of Division 703. However, I have never heard of uh, Ming Ha, the name Ming Ha. Have you ever heard whether uh, Duik himself was engaged in um, active combat uh, uh, right after April 75 in Phnom Penh? I never heard it. mentioned about the battlefields. He simply made a mention about the engagement in the ministries and administrative tasks. He never made a mention of uh, active combat combats at the battlefields. Um, you, s you said, I believe, that you yourself were never involved in execution of people. Were you, or, or was your battalion ever involved in killing um, Vietnamese citizens or citizens uh, in Cambodia from a, with a Vietnamese background? But the as for the uh, Vietnamese, my battalion never encountered them. We never killed any Vietnamese civilian or a soldier. Um, this morning you talked about um, the cleansing of Vietnamese citizens um, by Lon Nol by the Lonol forces before 1975. Um, what do you mean with cleansing? During 1970, Lonol had a plan to cleanse uh, the Vietnamese uh, people from Cambodian territory. Uh, namely at uh, the island of Ko the area below Nhat Luong. I was there and I only saw uh, corpses and uh, bones and the houses uh, that used to be, that used to belong to a Vietnamese. Vietnamese, uh, rather, lunar soldiers actually went to the area, destroys uh, the homes and kill them. Do, do you know how, how many killings there were? Did, did you see any mass killings of Vietnamese yourself? But I did not see the act of a killing. However, I saw 
skeleton remains at those houses which had been destroyed. When I engaged in a battlefield there near Kokonti at the area below Nhat Um Now let me move to um, the, the period before you were sent uh, to work um, as a guard uh, in S21. Um, were you at one point in time farming rice in Presar? After the liberation of Phnom Penh, and when the situation in Phnom Penh uh, quieted down, there, there is there was no more fighting. My unit was sent uh, to work in a rice field at the Bray Saw that is in the area uh, in front of Pomade Pagoda. We was there during the daytime and at night time we returned uh, to sleep or to rest in Phnom Penh and that happened uh, every day on uh, for a limited period of time. And, and how long were you at Presar? Um, in, in total, were you in Presar all the way up to your placement in S21? I worked uh, in a rice field at Preso. However, uh, our sleeping quarter was at the Kabao Tunnel. And only later on, some of us were recruited from the military uh, unit to go to the Sisavada school. And there were many of us who were staying at the Sisawat school, and we were told we were the uh, preparatory uh, force to be uh, deployed uh, to various embassies uh, throughout uh, the world, and uh, some would be selected to become uh, pilots. And at that stage, there were no announcement. There was no announcement uh, for staff to work at S21. And I waited there for quite a long time before I was uh, selected uh, to work at Tulslang. Um, would that be for about a year, maybe even longer, that you were at Presar? in a rice field at Preso for uh, one uh, season. And in fact, uh, we did not even have uh, the crop yet. Did you ever see people, former combatants, who were being tempered or re-educated at Presar? While I worked in the rice field at Preso, uh, there was no uh, detention center or re-education center at the time, and the two-sign prison was also not yet established. Do you know when the re-education center or prison was established at Preso, when that was? When I came to work at S21, and later on I heard about S24 and that uh, Hui Sarai was in charge. Um, what happened to um, comrades uh, from um, Division 703 um, who had done things wrong, who were uh, considered um, a spy who were involved in treasonous activities. Uh, and I'm talking about the period before you went uh, to S21. What happened to Division 703 soldiers who had committed such offenses?
before I came to work at S21, I did not notice anything uh, with soldiers in Division 703 because at that time S21 was not yet established. I understand, um, but but um, this morning you said um, anyone um, who opposed the regime um, would most likely be killed. Yesterday you, you talked about enemies uh, responding to a question from the prosecution, and I, I believe you used the word um, bad fate. In other words, um, anybody opposing the regime or being an enemy um, would be, if I understand you correctly, killed. Um, so again, I'm not talking about S21, but before you went to S21, what would happen to people who, according to you, were opposing the regime or were enemies uh, of um, the CPK? Before the assistance of uh, S21, such acts or such killings did not uh, take place. Many of these acts only took place around 1977 or 78, since killings uh, took place at the bases or at S21. And before that, I did not uh, encounter or see uh, such acts. So is your testimony now that um, uh, only as of uh, sometime in 76 or 77, um, people would be killed um, who were considered an enemy, and before that, that didn't happen? Yes. Um, I would like to show you a document, um, Mr. Witness. Um, it is a document that deals with um, Battalion 96 of Brigade of uh, Division 703. It is a uh, document signed by Hin, uh, presumably the Battalion uh, 96 commander. Um, I have a Khmer version of this document and I would like to ask you to have a look at it. Mr. President, with your leave, I would like to show uh, the witness this document and then subsequently ask him a few questions about that document. I'm, I'm not sure we have heard the reference. Oh, I, um, I, I, apologize. I apologize. It's E3 slash 965, English ERN um, 0031312. Uh, and following uh, Khmer 0006840 and I believe I do not have the French uh, ERNs right now but I will give that to you shortly this document uh, is a few pages I would like to give to the witness please yes you may do that French ERN, Mr. President, is zero zero um, zero three two four uh, three zero to two three six. Um, Mr. Witness, I will walk you through this uh, document. It is um, uh, a document which has an English title 
brief biography of released soldiers of Company 44. Um, in this, on this document you see um, names uh, of the released um, combatants. Um, there are about uh, 49 names on this document. Um, what I would like you to do is um, ha have a look at a few of those names and then ask you, then I will ask you whether uh, this is something, uh, whether you recognize offenses like this and whether um, the reaction after having been arrested would be typically that these people would then be, be, uh, be released. Um, for instance, let's start with number one. Um, maybe duty counsel can assist uh, the witness. Um, number one is an individual called Tong uh, Ngit. And it says, uh, reason held at the very last column, Ren implicated as being unintentionally associated with the enemy. Do you see that um, number one individual, Mr. Witness? Uh, Mr. President, merci. Mr. President, thank you. The calculations I gave were false, and it was just an estimate. The defense is entitled to a full day. I have a remark regarding the document titled Prisoners Liberated. Uh, we, we've seen an analysis of this document, but those who were liberated were sent to PRISA subsequently and executed. I wanted to point this out so that the chamber may understand that we do not have the same vision and interpretation of the facts regarding that judgment. He's pleading, uh, Mr. President, he's not uh, objecting. Um, we beg to differ, uh, however, um, if we're pleading. I refer the chamber to document E3-8778. Um, that seems to be an attempt of DC Cam to try to locate uh, the prisoners who were released. But let's leave um, that aside for a later day. Um, Mr. Witness, um, as I said um, before the observation of the prosecution, um, I referred you to um, number one, the, one, the first individual, Tong Nguyen, 23 years old, um, and in the last column, reason held, it says Ren being, Ren implicated as being unintentionally associated with the enemy. Do you see that column? Mark. Yes, I see the name, uh, Ren. I'm not asking you whether you know the person because I presume you do not know the person. Um, but I'm asking you to give a reaction to uh, the reason held. Um, in your experience, in your memory, if, uh, recollection, if someone was arrested for that particular reason, uh, Division 703 uh, combatant, was he after his, um, his arrest subsequently released, typically? A more open question, what happened to people like that, Ex except uh, Fine. Yes. suggesting the answer? Well, su suggesting the answer is coming from the, uh, from the document. It's called Biography of Released Soldiers, but uh, let me uh, formulate it more op openly. Mr. Witness, can you give a reaction uh, to that last column? I 
I'm not familiar with this uh, list of names, although I was in the same division, we were in uh, different units. For that reason, I do not know uh, the reason for the uh, release. I only knew what I experienced, and I cannot tell you about uh, something that I did not know. Um, can you move to individual number 1818? <coughs> number 18 on the list, Mr. Mr. Witness. It's a soldier, 21 years old, Ia Kok. Um, the reason for his arrest is crashing into the vehicle of Brother 703. Um, have you ever heard of a cadre crashing into the vehicle of Brother 703? No, I did not know about that. If you refer to Brother 703, it means the commander of Division 703, and that is Tanat. But I was not aware of this incident. Uh, two down. Um, someone being accused, his name is Hin Chi. Um, he's a physician of the company, accused by Heng Un, who implicated, implicated him in poisoning cadres. Have you ever heard of such incident? Uh, for serial number 19, that, that name is Hong Jin. And uh, the last column said uh, he is involved with a woman named Sam Niang that uh, she raped her, but I am not familiar with this uh, incident. Um, maybe something went wrong because in my column uh, there's a um, person called Hin Chi who's accused by Heng Un who implicated him in poisoning cadres. Have you heard of that incident? Yes, uh, number 21 is Hen Chi, and I did not know this person, and I did not know about that uh, incident. Finally, um, Mr. Witness, uh, numbers uh, 30, 31, and 32, um, a soldier, a child, and a citizen and the accusation was moving as a spy or being a spy and stirring up people. Do you see that column? 30, 31, and 32? But per yes, uh, I see these names. I did not know anything about uh, these events. And, and actually the very last one I would like to show you, number 45, uh, a 29-year-old 29, 29 person called Sin In Ni, uh, involved with husband and wife CIA agents. Have you ever heard of that name? No, that's I am warning. Are you referring to uh, number 41? Uh, 45. Yes, I am warning. 
I only have uh, number 41. President, uh, witness, please uh, refer to the next page. There is uh, another page. Mr. Witness, um, have you ever heard um, either 1975 itself or 76 or while you were at S21 um, that combatants who had committed such offenses um, were released? If uh, there were such incidents, then they would not be released. Um, but the document says that the prisoners were released. I do not know the uh, source of this uh, document. However, from my experience, at S21, if uh, people were brought in, they would never uh, be let out. If this happened, it could happen outside S21. And this document does not indicate that uh, it is at S21. I, I never implied this was at S21. I was um, talking about um, a policy um, potentially uh, that combatants who were accused of this, um, these offenses uh, were really But if uh, these incidents happen outside, it's possible that they could be released, but uh, no such cases ever happened at S21. President, uh, thank you, Council. It is now convenient for our uh, break, and I noticed that the Deputy Co Prosecutor is on his feet. Uh, what's on your mind? Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. After a quick verification, I would like to state that number one on the list, Tanget, is on the OCIJ S21 list, number 13,226, and on the OCP list E3-432, and that number entered S21 the 1st of April 1977. Furthermore, the information on this document is an analysis done by DCCAM regarding this document, and it is in uh, number E3 slash 8778, and uh, specifically on the page in English 00989320221. It also rever refers to it and says that a number of persons on this list were arrested and executed. Well, maybe the list is wrong. It's your own Excel sheet, um, Mr. Mr. Prosecutor. But anyway, I will um, refer to it after the break. It is now convenient for our uh, lunch break. We'll take a break now and resume at 1.30 this afternoon. Court officer, please assist the witness at the waiting room reserved for witnesses and civil parties during the break time and invite him as well as his duty counsel back into the courtroom at 1.30.
security personnel translated to take his phone to the uh, waiting room downstairs and have him returned to attend the proceedings this afternoon before 1.30. The court is now in recess.